So today we're looking at some Batman miniature game and specifically some third edition rules and we're working with the campaign book Arkham Knight bringing some of this into third edition and trying to make this as relevant as possible because it's an awesome book and it is well worth it. There's a couple of new missions in there and a few other different ways of handling the game which really highlight a more Batman-esque type environment. So in today's episode we're pulling something out of here and in this installment we're looking at making up our own tree campaign or our own campaign story mode. So this is inside the book and it gives you all the examples and, and ways of creating the various different missions to build them together to make something that's crew versus crew with the ultimate goal being nothing less than taking over the city of whatever it is we're in. Today I've taken more of a leaf out of the campaign setting of the Arkham Knight game element and what I'm doing today or what I've started to do is draw it all from Arrow Season 1 so from here building sequences of missions with the overall goal of putting together a full story in campaign mode. Not without its uh, little problems in doing such a conversion, but we're giving it a shot. So the first thing I had to do was build a pathway and referring back to the episode list, working out where certain missions may fall and then working it from there using the uh, names of the episodes as an idea of who goes what and where next so the first head mess was working out what was in and what was out. So we know that he's come back, so that's why the predator mode is a good way to start. He's on his own, but he quickly builds Team Arrow and a base of operations and equipment and resources, etc. So certain things could be done, certain things had to be left to the wayside. So, good example anything relating to the capes can't be done or not available as obviously the arrow doesn't use a cape but some of these other names were just swapped over with the exact same effect backclaw disarm becomes hook arrow disarm and so on batwing support felicity smoke tech support if you read the descriptions of those particular technologies some of them can be transferable quite easily and some of them aren't available at all but the ones that are, they're the ones that we can work with. As well as a bit of a following change to one of the other effects. So there's a little bit of playing around to figure out what's what, but once you've worked out what's in and what's out, and the, the big key thing is that obviously in some instances models don't exist, uh, they're not available, such as like Count Vertigo or Vertigo, and a replacement model is found that suits exactly that particular character or intent of character, as some of them are based on Batman villains anyway. So here's an example of how I've laid something out. Mission 1. Any special notes? and so on.
So here's an example of one where the character doesn't exist. So I've just swapped them over with Scarecrow because it's uh, the way that Vertigo was portrayed within the TV series was a lot more closer to Scarecrow than anything else. A lot of these guys have uh, mercenaries, so there's a lot of soldiers of fortune as well as organized crime. So inside the, the book for the Arkham Knight campaign, there's a number of specific campaign options. And they most of it is related to awarding experience points and should an important character become a casualty. Not so much knocked out, but an actual casualty. And specifically, what can happen to that character afterward and coming back. Sometimes they have an effect for just the next mission, and sometimes it's something that can affect them for the rest of the game. And the experience points. For the most part, for the villain within the campaign mode, it would be for increase of funding for more equipment. And for the hero team, gaining some additional bonuses and benefits in purchasing the, using the XP to purchase effects. Campaign traits. Increasing skills, cancelling injuries, and so on. Which is all pretty groovy. Where does he get those wonderful toys? And so on. And then of course you've got like the under god the under the underdog rules. So this book has a lot of hidden gems inside and is well worth picking up if you can find one. There might be a few laying around somewhere. Hopefully it's something that they'll reprint and put out again. So today I just wanted to try and expand on some of these things. And the games themselves really do match. I mean, when you're doing a campaign, you can follow specific rule sets that are within missions, choosing the type mission types that are appropriate with all the suspect markers, etc. Or you can make your own um, end game result for that scenario. If there's a particular uh, data disk, a USB that needs to be kept, that's just a token. And then whoever has possession of that token at the end of the game is considered the victor. Very simple, but straightforward. Especially in something like Predator Mode, where it's 10 rounds. And you've got to be in possession of that. Everyone's chasing after you. Which is pretty thematic. So anyway, well thank you very much. This is a quick one trying to put some content together and keeping it out there. Everyone has to stay safe, do the right thing, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, muscle our way through this and get into some games where we can really push some campaigns and get some activities happening. Let's keep the community strong and we're all working together. All right, thanks for listening.